What is going on, everybody? Welcome into the Creed of Crypto podcast, episode number 58, as we come to you live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on a Wednesday evening, like we always do. Broke Boy Crypto here with you, and I have my co-host with me, Crypto Ewok, as well. A big, big show tonight that we are both very excited about. It's going to be short on anything other than the Pulse Chain ecosystem. We have a lot of stuff to get to, tons of news from... Arguably news, we'll get to our takes on this, but the <laughs> Richard Hart's tweets on uh, Paul Sex and single-sided staking today. We have all kinds of things to talk to. There are developments uh, with the whole Bank X deal earlier this week. We'll talk about that. We have a new tool, the Portal X tool from Power City, which is something that I think people are going to get a lot of use of as this market does wage on and uh yeah a lot more in terms of the pulse chain ecosystem outside of that not too much we'll talk a little bit of classic crypto stuff but uh, a lot of pulse chain stuff going on here tonight as we are sweeping the lows in the case of some of the assets we're at the lows if you are pulse x so ewok how are you feeling about the market this evening hey another week in the in the bear another week of silly fud and you know just to working our way through it man just another week it's uh it's starting to wear on people i can tell um the attitudes are are definitely showing that it's been a very long bear market but you know if you've been here before you know it eventually ends so i can definitely yeah. tell that people this might be their first bear market and they're not really sure <laughs> so lots of lots of worried people out there i should ju just say that I would say that that is definitely true. And it's funny because you say, um, you know, oh, you can see it's definitely starting to weigh on people. I mean, I we've been saying that for a very long time, but specifically with what's going on right now, it's unique now to Pulse Chain actually being released. You know, it's been about six weeks or so at this point. You see every day somebody that who knows how long they've been in crypto just saying on Twitter, which is just basically a cancer um, in terms of communication sometimes, but yeah. just see people saying things like, um, you know, we just got to admit at this point, you know, Pulse Chain is a failed launch. Let's just come out and say it. Right? Just stuff like that when it's been six weeks, which is hysterical, uh, probably even more so to you, uh, somebody who was at, you know, in Hex from day one. Um, but we're going to get into it all. Uh, welcome everybody in. If you're here and enjoy the stream every single week, smash the like already. Um, we're going to get to a lot of different stuff here tonight. Follow us on YouTube. You can subscribe to the channel. It is Creed of Crypto. We've got Pac-Man in the chat right now. And answer our poll question. We're focusing on Pulse X to start the stream. How many Pulse X tokens do you have? We've got four options there, 10 to 50 million. And yeah, for some of you bigger buyers, we are focusing on some people who are maybe dabbling into the market as well. So if you have way more than what's listed on the pool, then that's totally fine. And congrats to you. But we also got 51 to 150 million, 151 to 250 million. And then the final tier is over 250 million. So feel good, obviously, if you're over that final tier. So welcome everybody in. And let's just get the uh, stuff we don't want to talk about out of the way real quick, Ewok. Um, we'll just kind of look at where the, the rest of the crypto market is. I know still on Twitter, Ben Cohen and all these other people are still celebrating Bitcoin dominance being over 50%. Alts are going to bleed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Bitcoin sitting at just about 30K even right now. It looks like ETH at about 1830. Um, we've got Hex on Ethereum at that level that it's kind of been hovering around at um, eight tenths of a penny, a little bit below there. Hex on Pulse Chain at about 1.2 cents. Uh, Pulse at about a 24, or excuse me, 14% discount off of the SAC rate. 82% off the SAC rate for Pulse X, 72, sorry. That's where we're going to get to mainly tonight. So a lot to get to. So what do you make, um, and th there's those prices on Go Pulse, but uh, what do you make of the uh, the rest of the crypto market right now? Do you care about it? Um, what do you think about the continued Bitcoin dominance bragging that we're seeing on Twitter? It's just that it's that time of the market. I mean, when people are out of a lot of things, they're selling their bags, um, it becomes Bitcoin dominant only because there's a lot of people that are in USDC, a lot of people in Tether, a lot of people in DAI. Uh, there's a lot of bag holders that are out there that aren't invested. So yeah, that's why Bitcoin dominance shows the way it does. Uh, it's nothing to get excited about. They pat themselves on the back really for nothing. Um, <laughs> and it, it'll change. I, I mean, it, it's it's part of the cycle. So there's there's really nothing to 
nothing to brag about in, in my opinion. I'm interested to get your thoughts on this. So, um, you know, while we have long talked about this year being a an accumulation year as far as most of the crypto markets, we're not going to see maybe any necessarily crazy action. Looking at Bitcoin history, I mean, there is kind of a lot of room there to run between about 32K and 37K, you know, that if the market would get to that 32K point and then you start to get some buyers in, we could see a fly up a little bit. It, it does lead me to the question. I mean, not that we're concerned with too many altcoins, obviously, in this Pulse Chain ecosystem right now. But it seems like there's a chance we might be entering here um, as we're getting into the second half of 2023 already. Are we maybe getting to the point where this ridiculous bloodbath that the alts are taking, you know, most of them down 85, 90, 95, if you're hex, 99%. Um, are, are we maybe heading to the end of those discounts, like those kind of crazy discounts? Because if Bitcoin would run towards 40 here in the next couple of months, um, who knows? Alts may be kissing that goodbye um, as far as the, that kind of discount. You know, what, what do you think about that? I mean, are we out of the deep, dark zone of where these prices have been here soon? Yeah, I think so. I think we're getting close. Um, and, you know, Pac-Man said here, July is coming, guys, big alt season. Um, you know, historically, I think, uh, what is it, about eight months before um, the happening is mm -hmm. when the alts kind of start to pick up. So, yeah, we could easily be approaching that um, time frame where, yeah, this is about the bottom. And, you know, if Bitcoin does run, you know, that always has an effect on the rest of the market. So, um, you know, we could pull out of here and and not see these prices ever again. It, it's part of the, the cycle. It's part of the way it goes. And it could very well happen that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the thing people forget, I think, because we've been bearish now for so long is how quick these things can go, too. I mean, once it does yeah. start to fly, the alts will really move off the lows. So, yeah. um, you know, we've had all this time to accumulate. You may have a little bit more, but we got to remember that th these are not going to last forever and certainly nope. not with the Pulse Chain ecosystem, which we're going to get to. Um, really quick touching on. So there's some macro stuff that isn't really all that huge going on this week. Just some number releases and stuff. Jerome Powell, I believe, is speaking a couple of times. I saw that he already spoke once and it basically just reiterated that. He still says, hey, as far as inflation goes in the United States, we're still a long way from that 2% mark. Um, we're not going to get there this year, he says, and they're going to need to just keep tightening. We're going to have more rate hikes eventually, yada, yada, yada. So um, how much of this, I mean, it's, somebody commented on one of our videos talking about like, oh, this is always going to happen. The sky is falling. Oh, dude, don't you know about the macro situation? What are you talking about and all this stuff? Yeah. And it's like, you know, he was quoting Powell's um, statements. And it's like, I, I don't necessarily take all that at face value. I mean, the guy is going to say certain things. Um, you know, they've been consistent with raising rates and everything. But just, you know, how he sounds and what he says isn't exactly what they end up doing, especially because these meetings are usually 45, 60 days apart or something like that. So, um yeah, they can keep tightening, but I'm not going to ignore, you know, as far as crypto goes, Bitcoin's four-year cycle. So what what do you make of that and what the macro situation will continue to be the rest of this year anyway? Well, there is a, a lot of things. And, and as we've seen, they're all baked in. Um, it, it, everything has been so far, you know, the market doesn't really react, uh, crypto market anyway, um, to any of this stuff that the Fed is doing. Um so it's either, you know, people in in the the, the need to know are, are, you know, making moves before it happens. That way there's really not a whole lot going on um, mm -hmm. or it just doesn't really affect it. Uh, so I don't see any anything different coming until later in the year until there is actually a, an actual pivot. So, right. Yeah, we'll see where that goes. Um, I don't know if they're actually going to pivot this year, even based on how he's talking. But again, this stuff is all 60 days apart, usually. So I don't think there's that much use really looking at it right now. I'm still going to go with where we think Bitcoin is ultimately going to go, which will drag up a lot of the alts. So um, let's not waste any more time on that stuff. we got a lot to talk about with the Pulse Chain ecosystem tonight. Uh, that's what you guys watching are here for. We have the thumbnail tonight. We are going to talk about what size bag may you need in terms of pulse chain pulse x hex the og you know what are you going to need to 
maybe get yourself to, and this is all individual, but get yourself to that millionaire status, um, if not more, depending upon what it is you're trying to do as we head into this bull cycle and what, what it is going to actually take to get there. We're not doing any price forecasting necessarily, but these are just kind of guesses anyway on the amount of tokens that we would feel comfortable with holding. Um, and there's a lot of ideas to go off of there. So starting off though, so this was kind of the big drama of the day. And I know you have strong thoughts on this, as do I, but uh, Richard, and I'm going to go ahead because I always, I've been bookmarking these tweets uh, the last few weeks. So we'll go to Broke Boys bookmarks here. And um, okay, I thought I bookmarked the Richard stuff from today. Maybe I did not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you? Do you, do, do you, I mean, we can just mm, access it pretty easily. I didn't. You know what? I wonder if he deleted it. Which one? Um, uh, like the one that set the world on fire this the morning. The single-sided um, staking one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a minute. Um, oh, my gosh. He deleted it. That's why. Huh. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, well, that's, that's interesting to note. Um, well, in one of his not too recent... Well, more recent tweets, I should say. Um, he did say devs have limited time. You know, go.hex.com is being worked on. Uh, forget what else, something else was well, in I, there. But and before then, you before before you even go there, I don't want to okay. interrupt you, but I, I want to make sure that we backtrack to what originally happened. And I do have that tweet up, so I want to get to it. But like the deleted tweet, and I think we can both kind of do it from memory, but he essentially was ragging on the idea of single-sided staking and he's hearing a lot of people talk about it and he doesn't know why and it's you know what's the big deal um then he also actually went on a rant about like why are you so excited you know what gets you off about like taking somebody else's money right. um I, I want you to summarize it a little bit and then I will, then we'll go to the tweet you said because i think it's important to start off with I, anybody that's catching up but basically the the whole world was set ablaze basically because he was it sounded like saying single-sided staking is not coming to uh, Paul Sachs, right. which a lot of people were apparently hoping for. So go ahead. So let's back it up even further. <clears throat> and in the testnet version two, I think it was, or 2B, uh, mm -hmm. one of those, there was a single-sided staking pool that was introduced. Um, at that point, I think you could only stake, if I'm not mistaken, $10 million? um pulse x mm. it, it was capped so but you earned more of the party token i believe it was at that point i'm just trying to remember because it's been quite a while um I think you're right and then that kind of ended and disappeared and never came back so you know the the tweet today was like well <laughs> you know the one about excited to get other people's money, <clears throat> excuse me, was more along the lines of he was thinking people wanted to stake Pulse X to get more Pulse X. Well, the thought behind that was, where's it going to come from? Because this is not an inflationary token. It's a deflationary token. So who's going to pay the rewards? And I think, and then he kind of realized or maybe remembered about the party token. Um, and that was kind of in another follow-up tweet after that. Um, in, in this case, maybe the incentive token could be used, or maybe he brings back the party token. I don't. I don't know. Um, it makes sense though, right? Why would you? So my first thought was, why are these people bitching about staking when we have the best staking product in, in crypto? Right? Hex is. That's what it's for. If you want yield, stake your hex or buy hex and then stake it. I, I That's what threw me off. And then someone, I, I had to comment. Usually I bite my tongue and don't say anything. Uh, but the one that I, I couldn't pass up was uh, somebody had mentioned, well, Richard promised. And, and I yeah. had to jump all over that and say, well, first of all, Richard doesn't promise anything ever. You know, he, the, he's very clear about saying, I don't work for you guys. I never did. You don't expect anything from me or anyone. Um, and if you want it, do it yourself kind of thing. So yeah. 
that was, you know, that was where I had to kind of jump in and say something and be like, I can guarantee you that Richard did not promise. I, I, I've seen just about every stream um, and, and know that Richard never promised that we would have it. So he then proceeded to, well, anyway, let's go from there. Um, but after that, then, like I said, you know, he came out with the tweet that said, you know, I got all this stuff, other stuff first. The yeah, so here, I'll time. read it. I'll, I'll read it exactly. I, I pulled it up here. So yeah, so okay. he he. I think he realized, and you know, people are allowed to do this, believe it or not. Um, you know, some people I think were pissed that he deleted tweets. And now that I'm seeing that the tweet is deleted, I did see somebody talking about him deleting a tweet earlier today, and that must have been it, obviously. Right. Um, but you know, probably better to to think better of it, and he probably realized, and he has done this, I think, inadvertently before. But he thinks he's just kind of. And he is, I think, playing some kind of 4D chess or just kind of saying something without saying it, which I really actually value in his tweets. And then dumb people don't understand it and people that read into it a little bit better do. But I think he deleted it because he just saw what it was kind of in part causing. So, yeah, then later on, and I said to you, and we're going to be, um, you know, vindicated here, as some people would say, off of Richard Hart tweets. Um, but I said to you, those initial tweets that set everybody's hair on fire didn't necessarily say single-sided staking wasn't coming. A lot of times he will do things like that saying, you know, tongue in cheekly, this is what I would do. Or, you know, just kind of uh, cluing you a little bit like, I, I don't recommend doing it, but it'll be here. You know what I mean? Right, and right. and I did say that to you. So then he tweeted it a little bit later today. Devs have finite time. Go.hex.com is being worked on for Pulse Chain. That's another thing we're going to get into tonight. A lot of people, not a lot. I've seen some storms on Twitter about why can't I stake Hex on Pulse Chain on the, the normal Hex front end? So we'll get to that. He also says the auto router is being worked on, which is going to allow you to seek the best prices for anything you're trading on PulseX. Um, upstream updates are being merged for more for core clients. Wallet Connect is being upgraded. Single-sided staking needs to wait. So right there. And that that's kind of what I was thinking. And I think you probably were too, Ewok. Is like, he didn't say like, there is no single-sided staking coming to PulseX. I think that's more, that tweet right there is more what he kind of met. So right. yeah, what, what's your takeaway there? Well, you know, I, I didn't even know that he deleted it. I didn't catch it. Um, I didn't until now. That it was gone either. So um, you never... People put too much value in, I, I guess, what he says um, too quickly, overreact without thinking. Um, yeah. And, and you know, it goes back to what I said earlier. People are just so emotional um, and, and and they get so uptight about the littlest things. Um, it, I don't know. It, it's a it's a it's a hard place to be, I guess, when you have overextended yourself um and are in a bad financial position where you can clearly see that people are, are are getting overly emotional uh about the littlest things and you know just like you said you know i don't want to lead into this yet but the 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 even the the staking thing we have other options people are mm -hmm. just i i feel like there's just not enough people or not enough gratefulness you know for the things that we have and, and the things that that we've we've gotten and it's mostly because price is down, you know, and all these people didn't see their 2x, 5x, whatever it was within 30 days. And, you know, we kind of said that's probably not going to happen, guys. It's probably going to dip just like Hex did. And right. we've been preaching it, but but yeah. no one's listening. You know, they're they're overly emotional about it. Um, and they're they're just in a tough spot. You know, some people just aren't happy to begin with. And I think that's another thing, too. Um, yeah. until the price is going up and everybody's dancing around in Kumbaya, you know, it's going to be rough for a lot of people and, and they just should just stay off Twitter, but you know, they've got to vent somehow, I think. And that's their, that's their method of, of release, I, I guess. I think that's what it is. I think a lot of people, you're right, aren't happy to begin with, but then also are offsides with their financials in terms of maybe even their entire lives, but then also how they dealt with getting into the Pulse Chain ecosystem or crypto or over leveraging their sacrifices and stuff like that and just having way too high of expectations. But um, what you just said, so let's transition to the most interesting part of this that people quickly, people that I think were really thinking thought of afterwards is 
it, everybody has the shiny new toy syndrome. Obviously, everybody wants pulse. Everybody wants pulse X. They want. You know, we've seen people emergency end staking hex to participate in these paltry liquidity pools on Pulse X, which makes yep. zero sense. And then they're also wanting to, then they're also looking for the Pulse X single sided staking. This stuff is garbage compared to staking hex. Like when, yeah. when you have a barometer against the original smart contract that was staking hex for up to 15 years, you don't have to do it that way. Hell, if you have a huge bag right now and you just want to try to time it for the top of the next bull market or something, stake it all at once and get however many T-shares you want to. I mean, I think people just, and we've said it a million times over the last few weeks, people are losing what hex was about. and we're going to get to it probably again later. And I know I sent it to you, but RG3, Hex OG, practically Crypto OG, um, was on with uh, My Life is Awesome, Coach Lit earlier today. Ben Cage was there, uh, RH Max. A lot of people were on the stream. And he um, just broke it down so well. And it was like a reminder of like how, how amazing Hex is. And a reminder, again, something that we have said is that Pulse Chain was just the new highway to drive hex on this was built for hex to make hex more accessible cheaper to stake cheaper to unstake all all these fees that people are dealing with with ethereum which may still come down somewhat as well but people are just forgetting the power of hex that the rewards that you can get from staking hex mining hex whatever you want to call it i mean nothing else in this ecosystem is going to beat it when it comes to a cd of some sort or something where you can actually mint your own rewards so i i think that's what people need to come away realizing out of this what do you make of that ewok when do you think people are going to like come back and realize like they need to go back to some old school like hex training and watch some old videos or something like that so they can forget about you know pulse doing a 100x in a month or something uh i don't think it's going to happen until the price starts to run i i really don't um i didn't see it yet i know you sent me the link to it i started to watch it but didn't get into it um but he's absolutely right you know pulse chain was not built to be a you know eth killer or anything like that it was because the ethereum fees were killing the hex stakers so he wanted to fix it so yeah i mean i really think it's going to take the price run up and hopefully it takes off like crazy. Um, and all these people are going to have to jump back in and it, it, you know, until they see it again in another cycle doing what it does, um, they're going to forget about hex and, and that shiny and new object syndrome kicks in. Um, and it's this or that, or this sacrifice or whatever it may be. Uh, where can I put my funds to, to get the next, 5x 10x whatever it is quickly um the lottery mentality is is gonna wreck people and unfortunately they're not gonna make it a lot of people are not gonna make it and you know it, it's it's sad because at one point i thought the, the you know the community was tight and it still is don't get me wrong don't take that the wrong way uh but so many people have wrecked themselves and now they're trying to dig out and there's a lot of desperation um, and they forget the core values of why this community was founded in the first place. It's, it, it, it's sad. Well, I'm glad you brought up community and some of the people in it, because I, this is something I wanted to hit maybe later in the show, but it, it does make sense to start approaching it here in a moment, but uh, I, finishing off as best we can on the pulse X thing. So, um, once again, much like when Richard tweeted about like, hey, it looks like the market has decided that, uh, hex on pulse chain is the, uh, more desirable asset so far. Like, in other words, he made an observation a couple of weeks ago about which hex was higher. Basically, hex on Pulse Chain has been thirty to fifty percent uh, marked up over hex on Ethereum. He made an observation. He did not say, "Hey, any of you that are um, trying to sell off eHex and declaring it dead and stupid for anybody to get into, so you can, you know, get more views on your YouTube channel and get subscriptions on your Patreon." Um, he didn't say that you are vindicated and you are correct. He made an observation. And what so few people, I think, realize, like we said a moment ago with his tweets, there's often something left unsaid that if you read into it enough, you see. 
and learn something from. And I think from that one I just referenced, it was clearly just an observation and the money is going to flow back into Hex on Ethereum, which I definitely think that we will say. But just like that one today, I don't think he, he never was saying single-sided staking isn't coming. He will criticize mechanics and like you can use hex suboptimally you you can make daily hex stakes for some stupid reason and not benefit <laughs> from you know what i mean like you can use all of these tools incorrectly that doesn't mean like it's a bad product or anything he didn't necessarily say that single-sided staking isn't coming to paul sex and i think that's why he followed up deleted those tweets because he realized that's what people thought it meant and um you know later on said that that's not a priority right now basically right Yep. So um, what do you make of these people that are like getting out of their pulse X bags based on this news that doesn't really exist? Um, it, <laughs> it's again, just hilarious. We, I don't yeah. Know. We go back to the over emotional state of people right now. They, they jump whenever they think there's something wrong. Um, and I think it's funny because now they're going to have to buy back in. Uh, you know, we saw the dip right away. It happened within minutes of his tweet. <laughs> it's over. They say, it's over. Oh, my God, the world's ending. You know, chicken little, the sky's falling. And it, 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 it's it's crazy how uh, they need to get outside, get some fresh air. Of course, now there's freaking smoke from these stupid fires again. Um, but... <laughs> It, get get you know, your shit together, Canada. If anybody in the Canada, Canada, so we can get outside and get some fresh air, right? These Please. people, we need it. Yeah, um, yeah. It's over emotional. It's 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 messed up. Um, yeah, it, it it dipped immediately as soon as he made that tweet, and I think he realized it and again <laughs> deleted it. But either way, they sold, right? I, I mean, they got out. A lot of people sold because the market dipped. Uh, considerably there pretty quickly right after that tweet was made. And, yeah. and it's like, I don't understand. Again, you've got Hex. If you want to stake single-sided and get more of that, whatever. Uh, otherwise, you know, it was going to be another token that probably would have been a dump token anyway. Yeah. Uh, it it would have had the same effect that the, your incentive token is looking like right now. You know, people are just getting it and dumping it. So why do you want more of something else that just gets dumped? Why wouldn't you want to stake something that by locking it up does the thing that incentivizes that coin to go up, right? When you lock yeah. a coin up, people buy more than they sell. That's the goal. That is how price goes up. It's the only way price goes up is people buying more than they sell. Well, when there's more coins locked up, there's more people buying than selling because people are locked up. It, it just makes sense. And I, I don't know, man, they just don't get it. it. It it baffles me how clueless and how quick they are to make a decision um, and just not think think things through. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get to this um, in a moment. But I mean, obviously, you and I personally, I, you know, we... we just like everybody else, we're going to say, hey, non-financial advice. But we do like to share what our thoughts are and what we are doing. And, of course, we're buying everything in this ecosystem. Really, probably what either of us are buying the least of is Hex on Pulse because Hex on Ethereum is cheaper. So <laughs> why would I really right now? But um, really what we're interested in doing, obviously, ac acquiring some Pulse X at these prices today is pretty cool. As well as continuing to buy hex on Ethereum and stake hex on Ethereum, like <laughs> that's what everybody doesn't want to do and is forgetting about. So it's what we will gladly do. So um, yeah. that that's kind of what we're thinking about right now. Um, if you guys are here and enjoying the stream so far, hit the like. We very much appreciate it. We do this every single Wednesday night at eight PM Eastern Standard Time. And I want to get into before you do. Uh, Andrew yeah. wants it to get on another fifty percent. So just just letting Andrew. let you know. Andrew, Andrew what, what, is that for what? Pulse X? Or he wants everything to go down? Uh, probably all of it. I don't know. Uh, okay. By the way, real quick, <laughs> shout out. Andrew and his fiance got, or now fiance, got engaged this weekend. So I wanted to mm. say congratulations on, on air. Well, congrats to you, Andrew. Just um, don't let her have any of the gains until we've we've hit the top of the That's right. Anyway, Make sure so. you have a prenup, buddy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, congrats, Andrew. So I, so I, I'm not trying to start any. This isn't drama. What we're about to do. I think this is actually a very worthwhile segment we're going to do because 
as this market picks up, so Paul's chain's only been out for six weeks. As you know, Ewok and everybody watching, another year into this market, if not two, we're going to have tons of people coming into this ecosystem and wanting to find content about it. Like there are people right now, they're going to be investing in Hex and Pulse Chain that have never even heard about Hex before yet, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, kudos to them. They're going to be able to buy everything at these great prices right now. But um, I think it's important to point those people in the right direction as far as like where to learn some of this stuff um, and where to go, you know, to learn maybe like tutorials about hacks, tutorials about pulse chain bridging, all these little things that maybe we take for granted because we do them all the time and kind of know what we're doing. And I'll be honest, Ewok. Now, you and I have different experiences because you were really a hex OG. So you, you were watching Richard Hart from the get go. I mean, you were watching Richard Hart before hex was a thing, right. where it was hex, uh, Bitcoin hex, you know. So, what I want to caution some people that, that may be new and are maybe watching a stream like this right now, because this is something that I went through with the Hex ecosystem, is there's a lot of directions that you can go to for content on this. And I do hate that word. I don't, content makes it seem like just kind of vapid crap that people are releasing, which some of it is. <laughs> but um, you want to make sure you're going places where you really trust the people that you're watching. Um and you believe that their intentions are good because there's a lot of people out there, and this isn't unique to Hex or Pulse Chain, but that are making content that is specifically tailored um, and edited in a certain way. And I'm not even going to criticize clickbaity because, hey, we need to get the clicks. I mean, like if, if we don't make certain thumbnails, people won't even come and watch your content, right. even if it is good material. So you do need to have that. So I'm absolutely not hating on that. You know, I hate the game, not the player. But, uh, or hate the player, not the game, whatever. But there are people out there that are, I think, clearly, and I'm not going to name them at all, but are clearly um, in it for dubious reasons, do not have um, good intentions, and are more so trying to build up their own personal brand, totally separate of Hex, Pulse Chain, really educating people. Um, whether that is to get paid through YouTube, which we do, it's a paltry wage and we're way more excited about investing in this ecosystem, but get paid through YouTube, get paid through their courses, whatever it is, you need to be able to identify those people because there are a lot of them. And I will tell you too, that like when I was on, you know, like Hex Twitter at the beginning, there's a lot of, I, I, this isn't a blanket to anybody, but there's a lot of cheerleaders that maybe aren't necessarily like offering any real like stuff to learn. So I think it's important to focus on the people that I have discovered, and I'm going to kick it to you too, Ewok, to name yours, but who I think are like the people that are must follows for learning this stuff. And I have the utmost confidence are the people that have good intentions and really believe in this notion of crypto self-sovereignty and really love the stuff that Richard Hart has built. So for me, just to name some, obviously Johnny Chaos, he's not an actual streamer, but he, I mean, that guy may be the pinnacle of anybody yeah. to follow for actual good information. And, you know, he's been in a pissy mood lately and I don't blame him at all, but, you know, he will hop on streams occasionally. He was just on with Matty Allen, another guy that I would put in there as well, obviously. He was just on there the other night. You know, Randy Hilarski, obviously your friend Sami, who's just taken everything by storm the last few months. RG3, who we mentioned was on that stream today. Um, I am a fit of uh, my life is awesome. Lit coach lit. Um, he was doing some good stuff today. Obviously, crypto coffee probably the premier place to go for actual education on things. I like big pep streams. I've just kind of been turned on to Ben Cage, who was on that stream today. His stuff is good. Access alive for different charting. Mm -hmm. There are more, but I think it's really good to highlight those people because I think you can go down a couple different lanes in this ecosystem where. You, like I said, that there are some people not unique to Pulse Chain that are in it for different reasons than to yeah. actually educate. And I really trust um, and admire all those people. So I'd like to hear some of your thoughts. Well, I probably echo a lot of those people. So, you know, we agree on, on that sentiment with the people that you mentioned. Uh, the one thing I wanted to, to state, though, is if you see somebody coming out with uh, a bunch of courses or just um, advice, pay, pay me for my time. Um, you definitely want to make sure they know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You know, as far as crypto coffee goes, his course is probably one of the cheapest for the best value. Right. Um, I know 
uh, DCC has a, a course out that they have a course, uh, but they really branch out into a lot more, um, a, a wider spectrum of stuff. So it's a little bit different. I mean, if you just kind of focused on, on hex content, Richard Hart community wise, um, crypto coffee's course is probably the best value, uh, that you can get. Right. I think it's yeah. 200, 200 bucks and you learn from start to finish, uh, just about everything you need to know. So, you know, be careful with, with the people that you're paying for their time um, and make sure that they've been around for a while. You know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, some of these people are, are not old enough to be paid for advice because they, they haven't been around the block enough times. I, I You know, maybe not even enough cycles to see uh, crypto. This might even be their first cycle and they're, you know, they get a little bit of viewership and uh, and then they start charging for time. I I don't agree with that. I, I you know if you want to make good content and put it on YouTube and and pay get paid that way, fine, great. But uh, start marketing yourself, and you're technically now offering financial advice, and you got to be very careful yeah. um, because if you tell somebody to do one thing and pick, especially when you pick a side, right? Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna bring it yeah. up right now the e hex p hex <laughs> thing. If you tell someone to pick a side, you better be right um, or you're giving financial advice. And if you're wrong, you have a 50 percent chance of being wrong. So just be careful. Um, you know, I, I hate that. Uh, nothing more than than, you know, thanks, Johnny. Nothing more than somebody yeah. telling somebody which side they should be on. Um, as far as I'm concerned, your safest play is be on both sides. Right. The, and and I know Johnny said this more than once, but the sum of both coins are going to be more than just one, and especially if you pick the wrong one. <laughs> so yeah. the sum of both is going to be just as you, you're you're better off going that route. So I don't know. Uh, that's my rant on that, and I don't want to. Like I said, I'm not bringing up names. People know who I'm talking about if they are paying attention. But um, yeah, I'd rather not give any more attention to to them than than needed. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you 100%. It reminds me, I put this in my notes just because I thought it was funny, but it kind of reminds me for any wrestling fans of the old uh, WCW, WWF uh, comparison back in the day, um, prior to when WWE just obviously acquired everything. But those two organizations, it's it reminds me of that because like the, the clickbaity, um, heavily edited. And here's the really shitty thing about some of this heavily edited stuff. Like I obviously go back and edit snippets of our show and put them out as clips and they're pretty clean edited. There's not a lot of, you know, um, weird stuff in them or anything like that, but it's also you and I who are like real life friends that know and trust each other. There are people out there that have a guest on that comes on as a courtesy and then they go back and edit that guest's material to make it seem like they said something they really didn't. Mm -hmm. And that is, I mean, I would have a bone to pick with that person if you were doing that to me and I was a guest on your show, frankly. Um, so yeah, there's some of that going on, but anyway, the WCW thing. So WCW was basically <laughs> like, let's sign all these, like, you know, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Randy Savage. We're going to get the ultimate warrior back, Ric Flair, like all these huge names. And they were just a shit organization. They, were, they didn't have good writing. Everything was terrible. Those guys were all past their prime and everything. Whereas WWF didn't have all those names, but then just kind of built themselves up with, you know, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, The Rock, and they had the actual good product. So that may be a terrible comparison, but that's just what I'm saying between kind of the well-oiled machine hex channels versus the ones that are just trying to take your money. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And, I, and that's not to say there's many of that, you know, saying take your money is, is probably a bit strong, but I don't want people thinking there's all these landmines out there and, you know, anybody training about this stuff is probably a net positive at the end of the day. I would just recommend people be careful and hopefully the good names that we mentioned, you know, are ones that people will go to as they enter this market. So, yep. Yeah. yeah. And Johnny said it perfectly here. If you hold both, you have a hundred percent chance of holding the right one. If you pick one, you have 50%, 50, 50 chance of picking the wrong one. So that's, you know, but either way, the sum of both, even if you had decided back when Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash split, if you decided to be on the Bitcoin cash side and sell all your Bitcoin because you thought Bitcoin cash was going to take over, imagine how bad you would feel right now <laughs> to have a big bag of Bitcoin cash and, and no Bitcoin, you know? Right. Yeah. 
that's yeah. the position that you could easily put yourself in. So think about it that way. But if you kept both, you have both your Bitcoin cash and your Bitcoin and you're, you're better off. You didn't lose. So yeah. There you go. Yep, I'm I'm with you 100%. So um so getting back to what would you think the contrarian play is and maybe not even the contrarian play but the thing that we are doing right now and interested in doing is I, I want to buy more hex on Ethereum um and I want to stake it. That's like what I'm looking at right now. And speaking of that, so we we've had a lot of issues with this and I I do agree that this is I don't want to call it a big problem but I'd be curious to know what is going on. I tried to stake hex from Paul's chain on the hex front end, just go.hex.com. And yeah, it takes a long time to load. There's been many issues with it. Richard Hart in that tweet we mentioned earlier said that that looks to be one of the top priorities that they're working yep. on fixing right now. Um, but there was a tweet the other day over the weekend from uh, Pulse Orca on Twitter. Um, and I, I really don't think he was totally trying to hate, but he was just saying that he felt like it was a big problem. When is that going to get fixed and all these things? And people were kind of meeting his complaints with like, well, hey, there, there's multiple other front ends. Um, everybody is kind of co-signing the, you know, Alex McWhorter, Icosa.pro, where you can stake Hedron, stake Icosa. You can also do the HSI stakes for Hex on there. Um, I did one today. And you can do that from Pulse Chain very, very easily on there. It reads it right away. Also, Matty Allen, something that I, you threw out there to me and I threw out there to them, has a front end as well. Um, I always forget what it is. is Tshare.app. Yep. That, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, it's go.tshare.app is the staking part of it. Um, it Tshare.app is. is is just uh, you know the regular website, and then the front end is is go.tshare.app. You know, you got apphex.win. Uh, I think there's five or six other ones, um, and yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Orca was yes, Johnny just said it. Orca was being. I was going to read that, yeah. Concern <laughs> troll, um, Eric Eric Wall Jr. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, people do that, and they're like, "Well, how can I bring anybody into this space if if the if the main site isn't working?" Well, wh why? Well, there because there's a bunch of other ones that are, right. um, and 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 I'm sure Richard's priorities are to get other things done first. There are more important things than a staking front end especially when you have alternatives, you know, it just, it doesn't make sense. You got to prioritize things. And, you know, Richard's always been, I, we, we've said this many times, he's always been two or three steps ahead. So trust him, trust what he's doing. Uh, they're working hard behind the scenes, even though we shouldn't expect things, anything from him. Um, but we know they'll be taken care of. If you know anything about him, he's very, proud to say how much how how 100 uptime things like that um and i'm sure it bothers him when things aren't working the way they should it will be fixed guys just relax use one of the other ones for now and if you can't onboard somebody because of that well then you know th that's a, that's a terrible reason so yeah baby you you must not know um enough outs to get your stuff staked then. So, yeah. um, yeah, I, I'm with you hundred percent. The points that people made about, you know, it actually being more decentralized, really the fact that there's multiple other front ends to go use that are a community built, I think is a great thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think probably the top place to recommend just because the layout is so nice and everything is, uh, I coast it off pro for sure. Um, yeah. and I, I, I did do a stake the other day with Maddie Allen's too. So, um, definitely good stuff and kudos to the those guys for building it all, obviously. So um, I want to touch on this quick. And speaking of Johnny, I saw him talk about this the other day. I mean, everybody's been talking about well, this. Well, Johnny but... just asked if he wanted to pop in. You send Sure. Him yeah, yeah. Because I would like to ask him about this. Um, if you want to send him the link, that'd be, I'll send him a, be fine. In, I'll send him an invite here. Hang on. It's funny how jo Johnny just kind of appears, you know, <laughs> on, the, on these. All streams. you have to do I, is take chaos and, yeah. and there he is. And then he comes a calling. So we'll, we'll get him on hopefully here in a moment, it sounds like. Um, if you guys are here, though, and enjoying the stream so far, smash the like. We very much appreciate it. Subscribe to the Creed of Crypto channel. We do this stream every single Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, I want to talk about this Bank X thing just a little bit more. So um, we don't have to get into the weeds too much, but... So basically, if you guys relate to the party on this one, Banks, Bank X was a uh, silver, basically, 
I, I forget how they actually pitched it. Basically, a stable coin that was um, a derivative of of where silver is sitting price wise. Um, there's some guy named Lance, I guess, that was in charge of the whole thing. Um, so they got sent a. It was 800 million hex, correct, from the Godwill. There he is, uh, Johnny like, Chaos. Welcome Johnny in, Chaos. Welcome. Yeah, it was like. Hey, gentlemen. I think it Good was like 880 million. Uh, yeah, 820, 830, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. So that, that's where we stood. I think they sold a little bit of it off, and then we saw mm -hmm. the other day. This was on Monday that Lance, whatever, somebody involved with Bank X basically staked um, the whole thing or most of the kit and caboodle anyway for like 34 days. Um, I'm gonna kick it to Put it into first. three wallets, two hundred thousand and or two hundred million in each wallet, and they're doing rolling stakes. Like I don't know, like Hex was designed to do. Yeah. Right. So we're actually teaching them how <laughs> Hex works, and they're actually learning that you can't just tap the sell button or you get the worst possible price. Yeah. So actually, this is a good thing because they're now learning how the system works. After doing those rolling stakes long enough, they might say. Wait a second here. Let's go a little longer, <laughs> right? Maybe, maybe I don't want to sell it right now because if they were to sell it right now, they get a million bucks. Yep. They lose nine million right now. Yep. If they were to sell right. it, okay. So if they're scammers, that's exactly what they'll do. And the next day, whoop, like it never even happened. It's only two days of the adoption amplifier. Yeah. We had we had five hundred million come off, three hundred and sixty five days, man. 500 million every single day. If you yeah. think about it, let's say they sold at full market value. That's $10 million. What do we do in daily volume? Yeah. Right. So it's it's not as big of a deal as people think it is. And unfortunately, the new guys, they just hear 800 million. Oh, my God. And they can't fathom that amount of number. Well, and, and, and here's the thing. You think you're safe somewhere else? No. There's whales in every single coin. They can wreck the price at a whim. Yeah. Right? Temporarily yeah. wreck the price at a whim. You know, and people don't realize that. That is that is something they need to be educated on. You can't be chicken little and duck for cover every time somebody's going to make a sell. You know, and this is this is this is a problem. And look, you know, we we've got people in the community that are that are that are good people, okay, and they're scared. And then their fear projects on other people. But you got to yeah. remember, every one of us, we're, we're just human beings. You know, we're going to react with, you know, certain ways. And when you are panicked, you are not thinking rationally. You know, that's when you're going to make the biggest, biggest mistakes is because you're already in fear mode. Right yeah. now, as 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 streamers and, and as community members, it's kind of our responsibility to let people know, OK, I understand that you, you see that as a lot of money, and uh, I understand, yes, it can temporarily wreck the price, but if you're staked out for a year, you need to worry about a price a year from now, <laughs> not what's going to happen on the five-minute chart. Yeah. You know? Well, Otherwise, and and, sil and Silver didn't do us any favors. I know he's way deep into this, right. um, but his post really kind of created a lot of fear as well, so... Um, and, and as and much I, as I, I respect gonna... his opinion, he's got to be careful about things like that, you, you know, because that creates a, 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 a chain reaction of events that isn't good. Yeah, well, it and it can because of of this this stuff. And, you know, I got a little I got a little harsh, harsh because I was kind of on my tangent about other people. And, and I said, you know, <laughs> unnecessary fear. But the thing is. This this thing bothers him. It does bother him. Uh, and he's projecting that to the community as where I've you know, we've all seen it before. This is this is not the first time there was hundreds of millions of hex dumped. Right. We started with hundreds of millions of hex dumped right out the gate when Nightly Crypto decided to take a shit on us. Yep. Right. Yep. 150 million emergency unstaked. It sold 90 million one cell market dump. And Hex's infancy. Yeah, if it was early. any other coin, that would have destroyed it. So these dumps, these large dumps, these large dumps that we sustain through, don't show you weakness. They show you strength. How do you know how strong something is if it hasn't been battle tested, right? 
And, and, and that's what we've seen over and over again, just before, just, you know, when we had that first initial dump, it was like 200 million hex and the price price went dead, bloop, like it never mm -hmm. even happened. Not that long ago, we had a 200 million hex dump. Okay. Yeah. And, and when you are in the, when you are in the chain and I had to stop doing it, I had to stop doing it myself because I get into the chain analysis and I start seeing people making stupid moves. And I'm thinking to myself that I'm not doing a good job of educating people. And I'm, I'm taking it all personal because I'm like, how are they doing this stupid shit? It's like, am I not loud enough? Am I not, you know, projecting enough? What's going on? And then I think, look, I got like 24,000 followers. Yeah. I don't have a stream. Can't be and there is, over two, you know, 300,000, <laughs> 300,000 hex holders. They don't even know who I am. <laughs> I'm taking this right. shit personally. They don't even know who I am. And if they did listen to me, they probably ignored me anyway. And that isn't my problem. So all I can do is is focus on the people that want to listen. Yep. And, you know, I, I like Silver. I think he's a cool guy. I learned a lot from uh, chain analysis and stuff from him. The, the problem we have is people are psychologically default fear, right? Hmm. And that is for survival purposes, sure. right? And that's ingrained into our, our essence that we're default fear. And, uh, you know, in, in, in the fear of the unknown is, is the biggest, right? Nobody knows what's going to happen until it does. So your mind is going to start filling in the blanks negatively. And that is just human. That is yeah. just human. That's survival. That is human. And you have to fight that shit with all your life, if you're going to survive, because, you know, in, in this space, because the fear is around every corner, the fear is around every single corner. This is nothing new. This has all happened before. Yeah. Especially uh, this time in the market, you know, yeah. this time in the cycle anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's really nothing for people to get worked up about, but, but unfortunately the greener they are, the more unsure they are yep. because they've not lived through it before. Right. You know, the first time you get into a fight, you are nervous as hell, mm -hmm. but if you win the fight, then you get a little confident. Right. And let yeah. me tell you, you guys have taken the biggest ass whooping that you could possibly take in this space right now. And if you can survive this, you can win any fight. Yeah. So hang in there, hang in there. Don't let people get you worked up. I think you're exactly right. I mean, it is a, a fact that, I mean, people will do more to avoid pain than they will to attain happiness or go after their yeah. goals or anything like that. So, yeah, they, they're going to check the fear box first before anything else. And another point about what you just said, Johnny, is like on these other chains, you know, because all the time, yeah, all these chains are going to have to deal with like dumpage from whales and things like that. Keep in mind on pretty much any other one of these chains, you know, we're seeing a lot of people talk about like optimism and Arbitrum and all this other crap right now, Aptos and New Layer 1. The, the people that are dumping there are people that collected all these tokens at a severe discount to what you bought. So, I mean, these people have even more incentive to dump and dump even quicker because they got these tokens at a discount before they mm -hmm. were even on the market or anything like that. It's a way, way, way more dangerous space than this. I mean, like yeah. Bank X may may still do it eventually. Who knows? But they well, they were well, gifted well, the tokens. Let me, at let me throw value. one out for you here. What if Godwell gave it to him so they would dump it so that he could buy it all back at a discount and still own a controlling stake in their Bank X? Mm -hmm. I've heard that too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, think about that for a second. You get to sacrifice ten million dollars. And you get to buy it back for $100,000 because they dump it and you still have a $10 million stake in their bank X yeah. because you literally purposefully gave it to somebody you knew who was going to dump it because they did have a cap on how much, I mean, literally he controls it. They had a cap on how much you could sacrifice and he took a majority of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he has the controlling interest in that particular company. Now, whether or not it succeeds or not, it's not the point, but if you give somebody uh 10 million dollars and then they give you all your money back it's like you never even lost it right that's pretty mm -hmm. pretty damn smart play and if everybody's scared right now and nobody else buys it he wins because he gets to buy it all back while everybody else is scared sure right so well the other pretty, pretty unique play so uh 
you know, I I don't like the fact that people have been badgering the God whale. You don't know what his motives are or reasons why he does things, right? Right. Uh, but I mean, that's just one type of speculative play. And we know, look, God has got a, a stake in this too. He wants to protect his price. Sure. Okay. So, but that's pretty funny if you think about it. Just give it away to somebody you know is going to dump it, and then you end up with it back anyway and still have the controlling interest. Or, you know what? He still has a, a lot of hex left, even with mm -hmm. that 800 million. What oh, if yeah. he dumps the 800 million on the pulse side? Nobody said anything about that. Right. Um, he could easily do something similar um, on that side of the chain, too. So there's no guarantees what, what his true motives are. And he's a person. Yeah. And he's yeah. a person. So he could change his mind about Hex tomorrow. Yeah. God Whale himself could dump on you. Yeah. What happens if God Whale starts selling? Are you all going to run for cover? Or you know, or, or, or what you going to do? Because you got to think about this. God Whale could sell to get a better price for himself. Right. So the the way to deal with whales in the ecosystem is for the guppies not to be scared. If the guppies are scared, the whales control the system for forever. Oh, yeah. You never get you never get to be a whale being a scared guppy. Hmm. So, you know, you got to think about that. There are wallets. There are controlling wallets in every single coin that can send any coin near zero sure yeah if satoshi dumped all his coins guess what would happen there's only like sixteen thousand bitcoin in order books okay so yeah, you dump it dump it you, you dump like twenty thousand. and how many wallets have twenty thousand bitcoin not many if they just want to go you know of course they'd have to run around from exchanges and you know there's market <laughs> moving and stuff yeah. but let's say theoretically if there was a timed movement to drive down the price which some of these institutions could possibly do definitely yeah okay they're already you know everyone's been begging for this institutionalization of, of crypto guess what satoshi's woolen in his grave right now mm -hmm. that was never his intent you know you should pull up the white paper sometime and just read it <laughs> for the audience so they yeah. can actually understand that the institutionalization of crypto is never what it was meant to be and we have these people out there they're just begging and pleading for institutions to come in and buy their bags and what they don't realize is they are enabling enabling the institutions and they're taking away their own opportunity by doing so yep. but they don't care because they're sitting with two or three bitcoin in their wallet and they're like i'm going to the moon because i'm so <laughs> vested you know and it's it's just yep. hilarious and yep. some of them don't even have that. They got 0 0.01 or something. Exactly. I'm really glad you brought that up, actually, Johnny, because we we didn't have that slated to talk about tonight because we did a little bit last week. But I am I really want to hear your thoughts on this because yeah, everybody is clamoring about these institutions getting involved. And oh man, look at all these ETFs. Like this is not good. Talking all this stuff. Yeah. So let me know. I want to know specifically what you think about this. Like with this upcoming cycle in mind, you know. Everybody has talked about, like, I mean, how they did last bull cycle. We're going to have six figure BTC, 100K BTC, uh, you know, have a time frame set up for it. What do you think we could see? We know that Bitcoin and crypto's returns are largely diminishing cycle over cycle. So, do you think, and I, we just made a video on this the other day, and all these people didn't understand what our point was, but do you think that we could see even more diminishing returns because the market, who is buying up everything right now, the, the, those institutions will have incentive to dump on grandma and grandpa Bitcoin right. ETFs heads. And who knows, we don't even get far over six figures BTC, or maybe the bull market stops out early. What do you think we see this coming cycle because of the institutions being involved? That is full of loaded questions. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some loaded answers. Are you gonna, are you gonna ask me next? Is Hex gonna hit thirty thousand dollars so we can do a, <laughs> do, a, do a quick little crop of, uh, of yeah. and, and say, yeah, this guy's he said this, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> so here's the thing with that man. This is this is uncharted water here. Mm -hmm. The the institutions are making a power play for Bitcoin. Are they going to try to crush it? Or are they going to try to crush us? That's the question. See, 
Bitcoin has to be traded on centralized exchanges. All of this stuff is off chain back room. So to really understand what's going on in Bitcoin is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And our networks are very clear and transparent. Okay. Everything's on chain. You know, there is some DEXs that do some sales, right? But the majority is online and visible. And, and that's part of the problem with Hex and, and Pulse and everything is the fact that all this shit is normal. It's always going on. Just we have people that have the ability to track it because it's so open and transparent. So then when you you take that extra knowledge, you know, uh, you, you, you're you kind of armed and dangerous. If, if you have all the information, you're going to speculate. And if you're going to speculate, you're going to you're going to start looking towards the gloom and doom. It, it's really, you know, to get back to your question, though, because I don't want to stray too far from it. I do that because ADD. But um, <laughs> the the problem with that is no one knows no no one can know because of all we, we don't know the intent of what's going on right now so that is a big fat unknown now if we're just looking at normal cycles and saying diminishing returns uh i'm kind of in agreement with with somi on that that people are going to be calling for the hundred thousand bitcoin and we'll probably get upwards of eighty thousand. now with the institutionalization and and stuff that's going on i think that's an advantage towards our ecosystem because what we need to do is is kind of promote that look this is a clear and transparent network there there is not this closed door stuff going on that 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 goes on and uh you know with the institutions right uh we're trying to get back to the ethos and yeah i understand people are like well the oa owns dude go to etherscan.com Okay, click tokens and look look at any of those tokens. There are, you know what? Let me let me send this to you. Let I me actually send the them list of like a hundred or however fifty how top centralized they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> People seem to forget that centralization like that is what happens with these things at the beginning, and that's where the opportunity has traditionally been. Yeah, I've never known BlackRock to get into something though to to fail. So th that kind of leads me to to that portion of it is I don't think they're getting into it to hurt the users unless they're being paid to do so. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know that would be the only only way I could see them not going after. You know, the, who knows? I don't think they're going for the users though. Oh dang but, it! You can't do that, Ewok. <laughs> I was actually going to say I, I feel the opposite way. I, I feel like they, they may be doing that because, you know, by the time that you incorporate one of these ETFs into whatever your portfolio <laughs> is or something like that, and then the price starts going down, I mean, BlackRock's going to have control of the fund anyway. And I'm sure they're taking like hefty expense ratios out of it and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think they're getting ready to dump on people's heads probably. That's, maybe that's just the... Uh, you know, masochist in me or the realist, I guess, but it's quite possible. Are you trying to, you got yeah, it, Johnny? I'm still looking for it. I'm oh, letting you guys talk. Right. I'm still looking for it. You guys talk. I've done talk the whole bunch. All right. <laughs> um, your show. I'll I do hang. think it's an interesting, I do think it's interesting though. Yeah. I, I do think that we could see suppressed prices because of that. So uh, that's why I'm a fan of getting more aggressive now. And I really like what Johnny said too, because, and I, I'll get your thoughts on this Ewok because this does make you kind of double down on DeFi even more. You know, um, we already think that we're in the best projects of crypto, the best products in crypto that, that have been created. Um, what do you think this does for DeFi long term? Because this is all obviously going to be, this is just Bitcoin ETFs. Eventually, they'll probably be an Ethereum ETF. Sure. But, you know, it, it feels good. I think it feels even better to be in DeFi in a time like this. Cause yeah, maybe, maybe we still run as normal. And if the rest of the market is a little bit suppressed towards the end and they are dumping on everybody's heads and stuff like that, maybe we don't experience that as strongly still being in DeFi. What do you think about that? Well, if they do dump on people's heads, I think it goes back to the original statement and, and Richard preaches this all the time is it crypto was invented to get rid of the middlemen. See what they're doing guys. <laughs> This is true crypto over here. This is why yeah. you need DeFi. 
So, I mean, it could totally benefit systems like ours, you know, to have the decentralization and the, you know, as far as pulse chain goes, um, and, and the system that is hex, you know, trustless yield, you don't have to trust anybody anymore to, to make a, a good yield on your own product. So I, I think it could only really help us, um, especially if they do decide to dump on people's heads. Now, if they prop the price up and they do some funny things and, you know, then then we'll see. But I, again, we just have to see how that one plays out because, you know, it could go either way. But but like I said, you know, if they do malicious things, it's it's more reason to bring people over to our ecosystem and, and say, there you go. That's prime example of why we don't want middlemen in here because this is what they do all the time yeah um let's finish off with this because this was kind of the main topic of our show tonight i'd like to get johnny's thoughts on it too so um now i am gonna hold johnny to this and if he doesn't <laughs> give us the answer that i want then i will have to do some splicing and some things like that on the back end. <laughs> um but you know people talk a lot about like in traditional finance like portfolio diversification so like oh yeah you know s p 500 is top 500 companies and all this um can we talk about why that may not be as great of an idea in crypto? And of course, we're all in this ecosystem that Richard Hart's really created with Pulse Chain, Hex, and everything else. Um, what do you think are the benefits and the costs of each strategy, I guess, of like being uh, extremely, because you can even be quote unquote diversified within the Pulse Chain ecosystem, and then you can stretch as far as the Hedron, Icosa, that stuff, and play around with it if you want to. Um, what, what do each one of you think about like that? Like how concentrated are you okay being? And I guess like in present day with prices fluctuating a lot specifically today, how are you kind of divvying up your allocations to this ecosystem right now? I'm still really strong in Hex. Um, my belief is that because of bonding, because of ratios that Hex has to go up when everything else goes up. Uh, so I, I, I'm diversified to the point where I have a little bit of each in the ecosystem. Uh, but I'm, I'm watching more chances to buy hacks and especially, at, you know, these, these lower things, but the, the diversification is in, in the Richard ecosystem, you can't really diversify like you think you can yeah. because they are bonded. Uh, people don't want to hear that you know, but <laughs> that's the truth. And uh, actually, if you notice, uh, you can look at the charts. Hex has started with, you know, being worth 100 pulse. Today, it's now worth 140 pulse. We're getting closer and closer to that 200 that somebody said, like forever ago. But um, yeah, so uh, we're, 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 Hex is gaining in terms in pulse. Uh, and what we have seen so far is that when people sold their pulse and their hex or their pulse and their pulse X, everything went down. So we're seeing the bonding, but we're seeing it in reverse right now. We haven't seen the magnitude of what it's going to be like when the when the candles turn green. I think it's going to be really clear for everybody how bonded it is and how, you know, some things are leverage plays on others because they're worth multiple of those things. So when that thing rises, the, it gets it gets a multiple of it because you can trade that thing for 130 or 140 of this, right? Mm -hmm. So if that 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 ratioing continues to gain, well, now you're trading this one thing for 200 of these things. So if this thing's going up in price, but you can trade this thing for 200 of them the price has to simply be what the ratio is because you can trade that thing back for the 200 and then trade that thing out. So any way you want to look at it, the thing that's worth 200 of them has to be valued at that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. there really isn't a lot of diversity in the Richard Hart ecosystem because the pools are large. Now, some pairings were not made initially. Okay. That's what we're looking at. Some pairings, we just let the chaos happen and let everybody go their own way and pick their own sides and, and do whatever, instead of trying to, uh, there, there, it was a hands-off approach. 
I think it would have saved a lot of chaos and 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 confusion and stuff if it would have been painted out. But we know Richard doesn't like to like to box people in and and point them in a particular direction. He does kind of like to let things uh, work their way out. And and he's taken a hands off approach. And you know some of that could be because you know people were pointing it out, right? And maybe he doesn't want to be accused of manipulation or something. Maybe he needs. You know, he's been taking a hands off approach in all aspects for the most part. Mm-hmm. Well, so, that was that was my thought originally when they removed the E hex P hex pair. Mm-hmm. Um, it just got yanked, and I was yeah. like, I wonder why. And then I thought about it, I'm like, ah, well, maybe they because I did hear him say not long after that, the market will decide, we'll let the market decide. I obviously he didn't want to be responsible for any kind of you know, I, I wouldn't even call it manipulation, but when you bond it one to one or very close, it was it was very very close to one to one. It still isn't that far off. Um, yeah, four thousandths of a dollar. Yeah, and, and, and holding this whole time about four thousandths of a dollar. Yeah, one more dollar is four thousandths of a dollar going to mean anything? Right. And I know people are saying thirty percent, seventy percent of a penny. Yeah, this that's gets not different much. as we get bigger numbers, guys. Right. So does it stay at that thirty percent? You know, I, I doubt it. Um, I think they, I think they go back and forth. I really yeah. think you're going to see premiums and discounts on on both of them. And as you know, as time goes on, if that T share rate really gets out of whack, people are going to take advantage of it. It's going to. Oh take yeah, a even, if, even if we move from you know we're one point five now, even if we move one point five to two, that means half price T shares on the other chain. Yep. Mm-hmm which means double the yield on the other chain. So if you're getting double the yield on the chain, that's way more than the 30% in price. Right. You, yeah. know? <laughs> yep. you know, so yeah. It's, but, it's, then, but to get that, people have to, you know, it, it just seems like we were talking about this at the top of the episode. There's this departure from people, you know, shiny new toy syndrome. Obviously they're looking at Paul's chain. They're looking at Paul Sachs and there's just, I feel like this kind of newer crowd that isn't really as familiar with hex staking mechanisms and d- just doesn't understand right. it. And I'm wondering when that comes back in, Johnny. I don't know if you have thoughts about that, but I mean, maybe maybe it's just a story I've created, but it just seems like people are not thinking about that right now. They haven't been and, wrecked and, enough yet. They haven't been wrecked enough yet. They have they haven't had enough of permanent loss. Uh they see numbers and they're chasing it. Uh I'm actually going to put a video together on basic basic market dynamics so you know and i'm going to do it about hot dog stands to kind of do it in a a a kindergarten way to explain things to people i kind of went on a little bit of a rant today i'm like you know that's a pretty good idea i should really use that uh to kind of break things down i don't know if you guys caught my my twitch today i was actually trying to talk about well ewok did i know ewok caught it i saw you Um, yesterday i didn't see today I, i saw the yesterday rant well, is, I was, is, well, is today Francis going to make an appearance? Do what? Is, is Francis going to make an appearance in the in the video? Oh, should Francis be that? Look? No, I just kind of wanted. I actually, I thought about downloading Doodly and then sitting here at the computer and actually just building it out because uh, it it's really kind of an important thing because people don't understand markets in general and arbitrage in general and uh, you know how things how things work. You know when when you see one the outsiders are looking in and they see this one guy with this one stand that's making a thousand dollars a day and they're like oh we see him making a thousand dollars a day let us go do it and then all the hot dog stands pop up around them right and then now all of a sudden none of them are making a thousand dollars a day right Mm -hmm. so you know kind of on that sort of note i mean i don't want to get in we it's a big spiel but kind of on that sort of note to explain how markets work, how supply and demand works, uh, you know, how whales can make a play. Like, for instance, this guy sees this guy selling his hot dogs for cheap. So he buys up his hot dogs and then he goes home and then he set changes his sign to where these hot dogs are now two dollars each because he bought the other guy's hot dogs. I mean, I've done these same kind of things at like trade shows and events where I bought up yeah. people's supply. Now they don't have any supply, so they can't sell against me. So that's like another whale game, you know, that 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 people don't they there there's all this nuance because they don't teach this kind of stuff 
in school. No, you, know, you, you, no, you, you, right. you have to learn through business on what kind of plays to make, uh, you know, to know where a demand is, to know how to control the supply. You know, Richard talks about the, 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 the beers diamond thing. Diamonds aren't really all that rare, but because the beers owns them and they only ration them on the market, right? They can, they can control the prices. You as a whale in a community, guess what you can do if you're smart? You don't dump your bag. That's like taking all of your comic books to a pawn shop and going, what can I get for them? Instead of taking each comic book out and putting it on eBay and selling it for full price and making people fight over it, right? Yep. So if you go and you dump your whole bag of crypto, that guarantees you get the worst possible price in that time frame. You are literally making sure that you get the worst possible price in that time frame. If you're if you know how markets work and you understand, then what you want to do is you want to ration those when they're in demand. You want to wait for the price to come to you. In order to do that, you can't treat it like a lottery ticket. In order to do that, you have to be in a position that you're comfortable when somebody comes along and they offer you a price, you can say, piss off. It's worth more than that. And I'm not taking less than this. Have you ever, you know, sold a car or something and somebody comes in and tire kicks and says, oh, I'm only going to pay this much for it. And you say, absolutely not. I need this amount of money. Or are you one of those people going, yeah, sure. I'll take a dollar for it. You well, know? then it becomes on what you value. You know, and we yeah. go back to that. What do you, what do you value what you hold? And if people are selling it for pennies, then they don't value it. <laughs> right. And I think that comes from a lack of education and a lack of planning too. You have to know what your long, you have to have some kind of a long-term goal and have all this yeah. stuff laid out to begin with. But I think what you're saying, Johnny, also gives people a lot of solace too, because then you can really focus on, instead of just looking at the USD price of a lot of these assets, you know, you can look at the amount of tokens you have, not worry about that as much. And by playing some of these arbitrage games and I don't mean necessarily ratio trading, but looking at ratios and understanding how they work and everything, you can see, you can more optimally make decisions to see what to take advantage of. Perfect example is exactly, we've been talking about it on the show for a few weeks, but what you're saying about the potential for the hex on Ethereum T-share rate and the, the payout per T-share. I mean, if we do start to see an, an imbalance of significance to where what you're getting by staking hex on Ethereum, even if there is a 50% split continuously mm -hmm. as we as we move up the market from P hex to E hex, um, you know, it, it's going to be beneficial to stake it. It's got it's so. got a self. It has other self balancing mechanisms other than the liquidity itself. It has yeah. other self balancing mechanisms, and the 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 other aspect of that is is what what people don't understand is that the Ethereum side is closer to the exit that people are familiar with. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's also closer to the entrance. Yep. So when money is coming into crypto, it's going to be quicker for a lot of people to get into the Ethereum, just like it's quicker for them to exit the Ethereum side now. And, you know, I made a, made a post about that, but I, I try to be really vague about these things because I'm not, I'm not trying to influence people or tell them what to do. I'm just trying to let them know how things work and, and, and things to take into perspective that they might not be considering. You know, Ethereum still has 10 million users. What do we got? 200,000? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. You know, that is that is really significant. There are a lot of people that their first look at hacks is going to be on the Ethereum network. Because they're going to pull up coin market cap and they're going to go, "What's the sex thing I'm looking about?" And they're going to look at it, 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 pulse pulse sex isn't even listed there, right? Yeah. So we're not able to find out who these people are and then say, "No, no, no, let us explain," right? <laughs> they don't want to hear it. They're, they don't want to hear it. So nope. they're just going to do their own research and they're going to come across the information that they're provided with, and they're going to base their judgments on that. What has the most on ramps right now? What has all the on-chain stables? What has yeah. redeemable value? What has all the leverage trading platforms, the yield farms, everything right now? Ethereum. Ethereum, yep. So we're the new kids on the block and we need to wait our turn in line. You know, 
you don't open up a mom and paw store and think you're going to take on the shopping mall overnight. It doesn't work that way. Well, now, a lot of sacrificers thought that because they sure are mad that they didn't get their 50x overnight. And and you know what what Ewok, I don't know if you caught it, but when when I went on Seven show, I said something really controversial that really upset people, and I said we could be one tenth the sacrifice value. Uh, you know, from, you know, and, and, and not to be expecting an instant 10 X. And I don't know if he clipped it out or, or what, but yeah. uh, I said it back then because literally if, if you can't ask somebody that you bought something off of, you buy for a pro dollar and you say, Hey, okay, now that I got it, let me give it back to you. Now you give me $2 for it. No, because they don't have the $2. They only have the dollar that you gave them. Right. So in order to do that, what you know, what what do banks do? Fractional reserve banking. What were they supposed to keep? Ten percent. What is that? One tenth of the cost. One tenth of the value, right? So that gives them ten percent in reserve and ninety percent working capital. That's how it works. You don't buy something from somebody and turn around and sell it back to that somebody for a ten x. No. Because they would be giving you nine dollars to your one that you gave them, and they would run out of money, and the show is over, and you end up with a run. That's not how it works. What you need is new buyers that value what you hold, and if you don't value it yourself because you're trying to dump it on people's heads, guess what? They're not going to value it either. So as the network grows, if you're not trying to dump your position immediately, that's going to help it grow a lot quicker. But if you're dumping on everybody's head that's walking into the door, well, guess what? You get the worst possible price. You don't get your 10x. And you actually cause that. You know, when you're the one dumping, guess what? You're the one that's devaluing the thing that you hold because you are taking your comic books to the pawn shop and saying, I don't care. Just give me what you can. And you're responsible for the fact that you drove the price down yourself. And we're in a tough spot with this network, too, because you have all these people that are RH, uh, I don't want to say maximalist, maximalist. But, right? But in order for this network to grow, we've got to onboard a lot of other things, and people just aren't very accepting to that. So it puts us in a tough spot. You know, you want the new things to well, come you don't, on. You don't have to play around with it, but it's going to well, come over don't. anyway. So there's no <laughs> real, there's no use in resisting it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So we've already got a fork of Ave. We've already got a fork of Balancer. Uh, we, we've got a fork of liquidity coming in. Uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, Portal X. We have the whole Power City entourage of stuff coming in. No one says you have to use it. No one says you have to like it but you don't need the shit on it either. Right. Right. And that's the big thing that I think we need to get the word out there that, you know, but then again, if they're going to stay, they've got to be successful too. Or, yeah. Or they, or they don't stay, you know, if, if it's not, if it's not profitable for them or, you know, if they're not, well, once any kind of watching, it's staying. <laughs> right. But that doesn't mean they keep maintaining it or building on it. You know, if they're not getting any kind of support, um, who's to say they're going to spend the time to continue well they'll get support everything gets support you know it's like people think if they open up a business people are just going to show up no 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 no. you got to be on the map mm -hmm. if you, you know i own a brick and mortar store guess what guess what guys people still think i'm an auto zone place they still think i'm audio audio uh audio store because you know what? They get used to that audio store being there for so long that they don't look. They don't pay attention. They'll drive right by it. They don't know something has changed. And I've been here for 10 years. Yeah. I've got a fire breathing dragon that I set out front. You would think it would get their attention. You think they would <laughs> notice, right? Now, my online presence, on the other hand, because of search engine optimization and stuff, you know, I can work that, right? Uh, you know, because of going conventions and trade shows, I can make people aware of me there, right? But as far as actually having a brick and mortar sort of situation, you can go invisible. Nobody knows what's in a Mark building, right? So, and, and people get used to things being a certain way. People get attached to their brand. You know, uh, 
it's hard to get people to change. People are change resistant. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know there's change until it hits them in the face or they have a problem. They have a real bad problem and they're looking for an alternative path. Right. And they stumble across something. So you have to build the roads, even if you have a website, right? So people are like, well, you just make a website and you make money. Yes, when the internet first came out. Now, if you don't search engine optimize, optimize you get so pushed so far down in the algorithms. And if you don't own keywords, you get pushed so far down in the algorithms. It's the equivalent of owning a brick and mortar store in the middle of the woods. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you don't build the roads to get people to where you want them to be, and you don't direct them down that path, guess what? They don't get there. They never get there. You can have the best product in the world, which I think Hex is an awesome product. It's not a problem with Hex. It's the problem that people are unaware or they don't understand. And we're not, we don't have enough reach to yep. help people understand, or they're scared of it and they're afraid. And so people do do two things when they're afraid. You know, sometimes they just walk away. Ah, uh, ah, uh, it's too complex for me. I, I can't get into that. How many times have you tried to onboard somebody like, ah, oh, that's too much because we got to keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. We don't definitely. need to tell people how to build the fucking engine. All we need to do is tell them how to drive the car. You turn the key, you step on the right side. You're good you to go. go. Yep. Okay. If you need to stop brakes right there, you know, and, and, and that's what we need to tell people. And we have a lot of people that are so intellectual. And, and they, they expect people to communicate and understand on their level. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult because not everybody does. The reason they're here is because they understand it on a deeper level. That doesn't mean you can expect everybody to do that. You might as well be speaking English to somebody that only speaks Spanish and, and think they're understanding you, right? <laughs> yeah. Because you are speaking a different language and you have to roll that back in to where, okay, let me pretend like I don't know anything. Now, how do I how do I explain this to a person? Right. And, right. and that's always where I roll into my analogies and stuff is because I realize that when we're talking to people, it's intimidating. When you start saying, oh, T shares, five, five, five. This is all jargon. This is esoteric stuff. This is stuff that you, you know, the average person is not even gonna comprehend, even if they understand crypto. They're not going to comprehend this stuff. Yeah. And then you can have a result where people feel like they're being excluded, even though we're trying to be inclusive and we're trying to educate them. They can feel excluded or we're talking down to them because we're talking above their head. You have to meet people where they are. And that's where the onboarding is going to happen. You know, talk about the orchards, talk about apples, talk about, you know, these things take time. You don't, you don't plant a tree and expect that, you know, to go back out tomorrow and start harvesting apples, right? People need to understand these basic concepts so that when they get in, they're not just chasing the green candles and treating it like it's some kind of degenerate lottery ticket thing, you know? Because mm -hmm. when they do receive those lottery winnings, how many people actually survive sur survive winning the lottery? Not many. Right. <laughs> yeah. We either end up dead or broke. So we gotta we gotta teach people how to plan. And, you know, Hex being the mechanism that it is, it encourages the right behavior if people are able to utilize it the way that it is. But that's not what a lot of people that are in the crypto, they're not they're not they're not looking for a saving uh, 401k, IRA, long term right. savings thing. They're looking for the quick buck. So, Pepe. yeah, they're, they're looking for the <laughs> quick buck. So when these quick bucks happen. Boom, they're off chasing these green candles. They think they're going to win. And I feel like we fail in our education because, you know, from the very start, you know, this is supposed to be a long-term plan. And all of a sudden, all the influencers were, we're going to 100x out the gates. Yeah. You drew in the wrong crowd. What did you expect to happen to the price? The price gets artificially inflated because the wrong buyers are coming in for the wrong reasons. And then when it doesn't work out the way that they wanted it to immediately, they're turning around and dumping it on the market. So who wins in that situation? They get the worst possible price. They get a terrible experience and we've got them all excited. And now they're mad at us because we conveyed the wrong message, you know? 
I really think because of all the things that you're mentioning, as this time goes on, you know, whenever we do see Richard Hart stream again, you know, who know whether that's important to you if you're watching or not, I think we're going to see this reallocation to like more people talking about hex, more people getting back to the basics of hex staking and things like that. Number one, once the shine kind of wears off Pulse Chain and Pulse X being a new thing, but as this market wages on, I mean, this year is still going to be relatively boring. For for crypto standards the next six months. So I think that we are, I'm confident we are going to see more of a shift back to that hex education, back to hex staking. And I agree with you, Johnny. Yeah, we need we need to do um, even a better job of it and just start talking more about that <clears throat> than everything just on Pulse Chain and Pulse X. So um, any other final thoughts from you gentlemen tonight? I think that's a good place to kind of to kind of end it. But I'm, I'm with you 100%. We need to get back to that long-term thinking. And, and I think we will get there. I think... We're going to see it, and I think that's what Richard Hart will focus on whenever he does kind of come back in full force when the market picks back up. If he does. When do we expect if he him does. to come back, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's the other thing, too. You see a lot of these people that are begging Richard to stream. Why? And Richard knows it. Mm -hmm. Richard knows this. Pump their bags. That's Richard why. knows that you want him to stream so that you can exit. Right. Yeah. He knows it. Yep. He's not dumb. In fact, the more that you guys are bad, you know, not you guys, but you know, you know how I do mm -hmm. that you guys thing. Uh, the more that people badger him to stream, the less likely he's going to because he's looking at sentiment. Yeah. And the sentiment is people want a quick pump so they can exit their position and just walk away. And what Richard has tried to teach this whole time was delayed gratification. How many times has he said delayed gratification? How many times has he said, you know who wins? holders founders and exchanges those are who win long term right now it looks like the twit traders won because we're looking at a certain time frame right yeah but mm -hmm. you know what here's what people need to understand there was only this much time that you could have bought the top there has been this much time that you could be buying the bottom yep okay Yep. And if you're buying the bottom during this much time, you can go watch Crypto Coffee's movie that he put is 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 YouTube that he put out about uh, the biggest secret of crypto. If you would have dumbly just bought a hundred dollars a week, you would have outperformed everybody. You know, if you just 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 bought a hundred dollars every week, regardless of where the price was, because of the time that we were down is so much more significantly longer than the time that we were up that it would have balanced. So it's not really about the price. It's about how long you actually hold. And if you're not planning on holding long term, you know, then pick something else, whatever. Yeah. But I mean, we're trying yeah. to tell you how these things work over time. And, uh, you know, people still want to chase the lottery tickets do you want to know what works or do you want to dream of what you think works <laughs> right yeah yeah i think that's a, a common problem in the market is people like to look at the market see that it is one way but because they want it to be another way they think they think it should just be the way that they want it to be rather than just respecting the market which is what we have to do so um Pac -Man yeah seems What's to think you should talk about his pp more <laughs> Pac-Man yeah, was, was trolling me. It's actually kind of funny. <laughs> Pac-Man used to troll me, and now every once in a while I see him and it's like, you know, hey, you know, that Johnny guy, he's not all that bad after all. <laughs> How about there you go? Well, hey, Johnny, um, this has been awesome, man. Thanks for the impromptu stomp. And you got an open invite, I'll just tell you, for uh anytime you want to stop in the show. Um you can just well, I like to stalk, guys. I, I I like to watch your work and 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 see what you're doing. And uh, you know, I think you're you're doing a good job of of trying to put some reason out there uh, into the space. Uh, nobody gets everything right all the time, you know. Uh, right. But uh, you know, you're 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 putting in the effort there, and uh, I I think it's awesome. You know, I I shared out your stream. I don't know how many how many people you got watching it now. Yeah, I didn't. Like, I didn't tell him I was coming on, but I did share out your stream. <laughs> we appreciate it. We got about fifty-eight, sixty or so we've had. So, yeah, we appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's going to help the channel grow a little bit more. Always uh, good to network with a known long-term hexagon. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah, open invite anytime you ever want to come on. And we, yeah, again, we're just enjoying your stuff. 
I'm glad you're, uh, you know, open to being on camera a little bit more again, um, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I get it, man. On that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, but I do I, get it. You mentioned me earlier. You, you said chaos one too many times, and uh, I, I had to, <laughs> I had to appear. So you got to uh, appear. And I wanted I wanted to thank you guys, you know, for your support and uh, understanding that you know, uh, it, it can be real frustrating. Uh, you know, when you are trying to help the newer channels and, and you guys know, I've, 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 you know, I've been out here. And so just don't go evil on me and start saying, yeah, that bastard Johnny chaos. Cause you, know, <laughs> I'll eat my cool again. <laughs> you got it. You got, our, you got my word anyway. Well, just remember the recording is in our possession now. So whatever we choose right. to do with it, however, we decide to splice this up. <laughs> however you decide to, to manipulate it. Yeah. It's on us is going to $30,000. <laughs> There you go. Perfect. Uh, it's going to be an AI doing. Johnny telling you, buy my training course. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, hit us up with your Patreon link a little bit later, and we'll put that in the description. I got a Patreon? Right <laughs> <laughs> I do now, I guess. <laughs> I just didn't know about it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, it was good seeing you, bud. And uh, yeah, open invites, and uh, I'm sure we'll touch base soon.